Hello, I'm Ted Danglemeyer with Danglemeyer Associates, and we're about to do a demonstration to illustrate some of the variables related to charge generation, and there are many. There's a list behind me that will give you some of the more commonly understood variables. And at the top of the list is the triboelectric series. That is a list that gives you an indication of which materials tend to charge positively and which ones tend to charge negatively. Again, it's a function of the material itself. The intimacy of contact, you know, is there a great deal of pressure or just a gentle contact between the materials will have a bearing. Also, the coefficient of friction. What is the surface morphology? And, and will that tend to create high levels of friction and therefore higher levels of charging? The rate of separation has a bearing on it, as well as the charge recombination that could be, would be influenced by whether the materials are conductive or not. Relative humidity is a big one, and that's one that most of us are aware of, and it appears in many documents as required method. What we're going to show you is a subset of these, and we're going to use a Another instrument, this is a field meter, standard, ordinary um, electrostatic field meter, and it's connected to a data acquisition system that will display behind me the voltage or the reading that this field meter is detecting as we do this demonstration. I'm going to start the equipment. You'll start to see the line uh, proceeding here at zero as one would expect. What we're going to do is we're going to take these two disks and measure their potential with this field meter. Now, holding this over, we see that the plate, this, this plastic plate, has some level of charge on it. Uh, the metal disk has a little bit, but not much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on this ionizer to remove that charge from both disks. So again, we're going to get both disks at zero potential. And we see now when I bring them near the field meter, there is no charging. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just rub these two together. And you can see I'm not covering the whole surface. Now watch what happens when I bring the plastic here. It actually went off scale. So let me put that back on scale. Now that's over 12,000 volts. Now watch as I go across the, trans, across the surface of this material, it goes down. When I go back to where we rubbed, you see it's still charged. What does that tell us? It tells us that the disk is charged only in the area where there was friction and not in the other area that was not touched. If I do the same with this plate, you see it's in the opposite direction and if I can hold it at a consistent distance from the meter, you'll see that the reading ac across the full width of the disk is the same. The variation that you see here is really just the distance from the meter. So what's the message here? Well, the message is that when a metal object gets charged, the potential distributes across uniformly on the surface. If it's an insulator, you can expect there to be pockets of charge. In this case, just where we made contact is where it was charged. And thank you.